clogged pump stations due to wet wipes and sanitary products in the public sewer system when everything grinds to a halt. This is Thomas. Thomas is 50 years old and is responsible for wastewater in the county of Flushing Waters. His job is to oversee the operation of the entire technical system that collects, transports and treats wastewater from thousands of people in the county. This is his assistant, Marcus, who has just completed his apprenticeship. The two of them are on their way to pump station 6. They have been called out to investigate a technical problem, again. Pumping station 6 is one of many concrete wastewater pumping stations up and down the country, fitted with two large submersible pumps. These collect wastewater from gravity sewers, lift it a few meters, then pass it to gravity pipes that finally lead to the wastewater treatment plant. If a pumping station stops working, there's no time to lose. This is a real emergency. If the worst came to the worst, a backlog could push sewage back into buildings connected to the sewer unless residents have taken their own precautions. A look at the control panel shows a motor fault. This means going down into the sump. Thomas uses his gas detector to see if it's safe to go down. The faulty pump has to be hauled all the way out of the sump. A tough and unpleasant job. A closer look at the pump shows fibrous material hanging out of the inlet. It will take more than just pulling to dislodge it. There's nothing for it but to dismantle the whole pump. The blockage is removed and the pump is soon back in use. Thomas and Marcus are ready to drop dead. What a weekend! It's Monday morning. On the way to work, Thomas receives another text message on his mobile. Fault in pumping station 6. The same thing yet again. It's the other pump though this time. What the two of them pull out of this pump looks like ragged rope. It's extremely strong and won't tear. How is this possible? The phenomenon that Thomas and Marcus have to deal with on an almost daily basis is unfortunately not a one-off situation, but is one faced by sewage pumps around the globe. Wet wipes. These wet wipes came onto the market about 40 years ago and are becoming increasingly popular. In the last 10 years alone, sales in Germany grew 200-fold. When it comes to disposal, they are supposed to be eco-friendly and flushable. Flushable, though, does not mean they can be pumped. Wet wipes wreak considerable havoc and cost huge sums of money for maintenance, all because they are not made of paper but of non-woven material containing microscopic synthetic fibers. This means the wipes can be impregnated with soothing essences to satisfy our growing expectations of hygiene. We can have moist wipes without them tearing. What's more, sparing use of our precious water resources means that often enough, very little water is used to flush the toilet. This encourages clogging in pipes and pumping stations. Wastewater experts agree that wet wipes cost local authorities immense sums of money. Of course, these costs fall back on the consumer in the end, but not till later on. In fact, not until the local authority sets its annual wastewater charge. We pay for our growing hygiene demands with higher wastewater disposal costs. Is everyone aware of this and is this what we want? Does out of sight really mean out of mind? No, what goes down the toilet does not magically disappear, but comes back to haunt us faster than we would like. So remember, wet wipes don't belong down the toilet, but should be disposed of with household waste. Think first before you flush. Maximum efficiency and minimum clogging. That's what you get with wastewater pumps from Pentair Jungpumpen.